Hello, God bless, it's me, Dick Jr., coming to you from Up Ministries. Uh, today is Galatians chapter 6. This is the last chapter of Galatians, and then we're going to go into Ephesians, the next book. Okay, um, I prayed and asked God for the gift of utterance and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding specifically. Also prophecy, discernment, and revelation. But uh, I suggest that you pray also and ask God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding before you put yourself in his word. Um, and he'll give them to you because he doesn't want you to be in the dark about his word. Okay. Um, there's a promise such as, that in, such as that in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> but I also suggest, and this is something personal, but that you go to God with other things in prayer. Just try it out and see how it works. Just let him in a little bit. Give him a little faith. Try it. See. You know, pray about things. You know, I... Not just the bad things, though. Good things, too. You know, thank him for some stuff. See how it works. I can't make promises on these prayers, but I can tell you this. God's a prayer answered God. How do I know that? Because this book is full of prayers that have been answered. Okay? Many prayers in here have been answered. And I've seen prayers answered with my very own eyes. My prayers. Okay? Other people's prayers. Other people's prayers for me. My prayers for others. You know, lots of prayers over the years. Does he answer all the prayers? No. Do I know which one he's going to answer? No. But here's the thing. If I don't ask him, then I will not receive it. And it goes for you, too. If you don't ask him, there's no way you're going to receive it. Okay? So, those things being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is a really short read. This is the end of uh, Galatians, like I said. And there's something in here that I re it really touches my heart. And I see a lot of people that miss this particular thing in their Christian walk. You know, and, and how do I know? Because it's obvious on Facebook, some of the things that they post, okay? They claim to be Christians, but they post things, and it's not very loving, okay? So, those things being said, I am going to go ahead and get started here. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Did you hear that? Each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. So don't step into his sin, but try to save him from it. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Wait, what? We got to bear each other's burdens? Yes, we do. That's a cross, you know, bear the cross for someone else. Jesus didn't carry his own. Simon of Cyrene carried Jesus' cross. We just read about that. Um, so... For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. And this is true in all things. If you really think you're the biggest, baddest, whatever, you're nothing. Okay? To the rest of us. Okay. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another. Which means that you're not supposed to go around and say, look what he did, mine is better. Okay? That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to say, look what I did through the power of God and determination. Look what I did. You don't go, ah, look at me. I'm better than him. See, it's right there. Okay. Um, For each one will bear his own load. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. That's why preachers get a tenth. Or they do, you know, not everybody did. Paul, in particular, worked the whole time. Paul was a tent maker. That's what Paul did for a living, okay? The Apostle Paul, and the whole time that Paul was out there, he worked as a tent maker, and he donated to the churches where he was at as well. He didn't ask from them. He gave to them, okay? That was Paul. Anyway, we'll get on. Um, teaches him, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows... This he will also reap. And that's the thing that we, you know, you reap what you sow. There it is. Okay? There it is. It's in the Word of God. Paul said so. Okay? God's not mocked. You reap what you sow. Okay? For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, which means while we are here on this earth, while we have opportunity, okay, now we can do it. 
If we die tomorrow, we can't. So while you have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Wait, what? All people? I circled that. It's very particular and very important. That's what I was talking about. Let us do good to all people. That's with our mouths, with our means, with our comparing and, and you know, you can't measure people. God measures people. You just love them, okay? And especially to those who are of the household of the faith. That is a particular truth. To brothers and sisters, you'll give more partiality. But it doesn't mean you're not good to those who are not your brothers and sisters in the church. Okay? Because there's two particular groups he mentions right here, and he's very particular about how he says it. And we as Christians need to spend more time learning about this little piece here. Okay? See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It's because he wrote all capital letters for this. Okay? It was like getting a text in all caps nowadays. Those who desire to make a good showing in the flesh try to compel you to be circumcised simply so that they will not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. But may it never be that I would, bo that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Become a new man. Don't worry about whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised. The circumcision you need is the circumcision of heart. Okay? And become a new man. And walk away from that old man. It's, it's really that simple. And then you have to have a direction. Look here for direction. Okay? You'll be a good person in the end. God doesn't make evil people. If they really give himself to his word and his learning, he does not make evil people. Okay? For neither is circumcision or uncircumcision. And those who will walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So that was two different groups he just mentioned again. You see what I mean? From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. Because Paul had been flogged. So he had whiplashes all over his back. He did it in the name of Christ and he never denied him. Okay? That's why he said that he bears the brand marks of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. And that's all I have for this, but uh, I'm going to go now because I'm just thinking about what it would have been to, to what Paul had to go through. Not to die, Jesus. All right? So, uh, that's all I got. Amen. Thanks for watching.